Good morning, Shirshi. Why, good morning, Prince Krom. What a lovely surprise. Minerva and I were just about to go on a little flight. Well, don't let me keep you too long. I just wanted to take this opportunity to welcome you to Elise. Thank you so much. Your Haldim is very beautiful and serene. It reminds me of home. I feel so welcome here. Splendid. That's what I had hoped. Minerva! Down, girl! What is the matter? Uh, where are you going? Minerva! Bad Wyvern! Get down from that tree this instant! Uh, is she alright? I am not sure. I've never seen her behave so strangely before. She merely glanced at you and fled. I think I may know why. Perhaps she's scared of my falchion. I beg your pardon? It is a sword steeped in Naga's power, and passed down House Ulysses' bloodline. It is known for slaying dragons, and has a magical energy to it. Perhaps Minerva sensed that energy and became wary. That could very well be, my lord. But if I am to continue as Roseanne's liaison, this behavior cannot go on. I trust you mean no harm to her or to me. That is the furthest thing from my mind, Shershi. You know, I've been here for a while now. And I don't see myself returning to Roseanne in the near future. If I am to remain in your company, perhaps we should get to know one another. Would you care to join me for tea and a light breakfast tomorrow? But what about Minerva? I- I shall coax her out of the tree later and speak with her. Please, my lord, I insist. And tea and breakfast sounds lovely. Thank you, Shershe. You are most welcome. Good morning to you again, Shershi. Same to you, Prince Krom. And I see that Minerva is keeping her customary distance from me. Yes, no matter what I do, I can't seem to allay her fears. It's become quite vexing. But do not worry, my lord. We will work through it. I know you will. By the way, are you feeling any better this morning, my lord? Hmm? I hope you don't think me too forward. But I was passing by your quarters last evening. I heard you... weeping, my lord. I realize that it is none of my business, and I will understand if you get angry. However, if you need someone to lend an ear to your troubles, I am here for you. I have some... experience with lost loved ones, if you will. Thank you, Shershi. That is very kind of you. Think nothing of it. Oh dear. Minerva sounds so forlorn. That ear splitting bellow sounded forlorn? I think I've taken up too much of your time, Shershi. Perhaps I should be going. There's no need for that, my lord. I think there is. I've monopolized you every morning for some time now. And I think Minerva is lonely. You're very right, but my duties to you are- Your first and foremost job is to her, Shershe. And I admire you for that. You're an important part of my daily life. Both you and Minerva. I'd hate for either one of you to be sad on my account. I do so love to see your smile. Um, good day, Shershe. What a kind and thoughtful man. Lord Virian's description in his letters do him no justice. Come, Minerva. Let's go on our flight. Minerva? Minerva, where are you, darling? Oh! Oh, Shershi. Good morning. Prince Krom! Minerva! My goodness! She's actually letting you stroke her head! Ah, yes. I've taken to leaving Falchion behind in the morning so we could speak. I'm trying to get her used to my face and my presence. That way, if I do need to carry Falchion around her, she may not be so fearful. We were gonna surprise you with it. 
Well, I am very pleasantly surprised. And how so like you to be so thoughtful. You're both important to those around you. I felt it was my part to make you feel welcome. Both of you. You have succeeded splendidly, my lord. And I must thank you for thinking so much of Minerva and me. We do not deserve such special consideration. Nonsense! You are- ah! Minerva! Minerva, please stop pushing me into Prince Krom's arms! I'm so sorry, my lord. She can be so mischievous at times. It's alright. No harm done. <clears throat> I must be getting back to my duties. Good day, Shushi. G good day to you as well, Prince Krom. <laughs> he's quite adorable when he's flustered, isn't he, Minerva? All right, Minerva. I've been practicing this for a while. Will you help me see if she'll like this? Oh, thank you. I've never done anything like this in my life. Whew, okay. I'm ready. Shushi, we've not known each other long. I can easily count the weeks, the days and the hours since I first laid eyes on you. But ever since I first saw your radiant smile, I cannot think of anything but you. I realize it's a little soon to be saying so, but I love you, Shushi. You have been the bright spot of every single day that I've known you. You ease my pain and make me glad to be alive. I doubt I could go the rest of my life without the happiness that you always bring me. So... Prince Krom? Ah! Goodness! Shershi! Uh, that is, uh... Will you marry me? Maybe? What? You... See, that is... I had this old... Minerva and I... Oh, God, call me now! Please, forget I said anything, Shershi. I... How could I forget such a beautiful sentiment, Krom? You heard all of that? Every word. I have taken to watching you and Minerva play in the mornings. Yet, I had no idea I would encounter this. I see. Perhaps I should go. <laughs> Whatever for, Krom. I thought we could discuss wedding preparations. Wedding preparations? But I thought- I was merely surprised by your proposal, not rejecting it. I would never reject the man to whom my heart belongs. Oh, thank the gods! You've made me the happiest man in the realm! <laughs> no! The world, Shershe! And you've made me the happiest woman! <laughs> Wait, here. Please take this. Oh, what a lovely signet ring, Krom. It was made to celebrate my birth. My parents instructed me to give it to only one person. And that would be the woman with whom I intend to stand beside forever. And I can see no other woman for me but you, Shershe. My dear Krom, you are quite the hidden romantic. I look forward to many happy years by your side. Come, my love. Our future awaits. Lead the way, my prince. <laughs>